Hey guys, uh, somebody suggested that I play a half an hour of City a day and upload the videos and I don't know, I've never done that sort of thing before. I don't know if it'll be entertaining, so if it isn't, just don't watch them, man. Just don't watch them. Anyway, I'm gonna make, uh, I've never made, uh, um, an oil city that makes petroleum, so I thought I'd give that a shot. I almost always play in the Viridian Woods region because it's so flat and sexy and I'm not really a big fan of terrain in general. I feel like SimCity is more of a spreadsheet to me and the terrain just gets in the way. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find something with oil and make a city out of it, man. So that one doesn't have oil. Nope. That one has lots of oil, but it's not very flat. That one has lots of oil, and it's totally flat. I'm going to do that one. So, our concern when we're making an oil city, right? At the entrance of the city, you always have to have a tourist trap. So we've always got to leave a little bit of room at the front for some commercial kind of tourist trap. Um, once we're really well developed with oil, we're going to want our... our um, drilling stuff to be near the train station. But in the beginning, when we're not really well developed in oil, we're going to want our, our uh, oil depots to be near the highway. So let's find a place that's near both trains and highway. I guess on this map there's no train tracks, so we'll have to use boats. Uh, so we'd probably want our oil oil depot right here. Over over here. Um, now it's it's funny to decide where the oil depot is before you find out where the oil is, but remember, you don't actually need uh, to put the, the, the depot near the oil. And it actually turns out that we're lucky, and the oil is over where we want to put our depot, so good times. So we're going to put um, oil stuff along this northwestern side, I guess, and then we're going to put um, tourist traps along the northeastern side. And that leaves all of the southeast for for our actual city. So let's um, before you do anything, like even though our long term plan is to get oil, before you do anything, it's really important to get a whole bunch of money because uh, otherwise the game can become pretty pretty boring. Um, so let's just do this general layout. Uh <coughs> so up here, above this little road, we're gonna have the the trade depots, right? And then below that road, we're going to have the oil depots, the oil derricks. Um, and then over here, we're going to have our, our boats to ship the oil places. Um, over here, we're going to want some some gambling crap. Gambling crap. And then the real city is going to be kind of silly to have this road here the way it is. Let's make a curvy road. And... Uh, Hmm. The vast majority of the highway traffic, I would think, is going to be from the trade depots. So maybe we should be designing this slightly differently. Let's make a little curvy road. Arced road. Um, and if you hold down shift, then it snaps to 90 degrees, right? So we'll just put a little thing right here. And then we'll bulldoze this. Um, and then we'll go up here. Eh, no. We just want a straight road now. We want it to be... I don't know. Just kind of making stuff up. Alright, so... This road, sorry, I get. I was gonna make a higher density road, but that would be a mistake. Um, so now this will go up here. This first intersection to be uh, up in Oil Town, whereas the tourists can get here. You want the tourists to intersect with the highway before the Oil Town, right? Because you want tourist stuff to be closest to the to the highway. Um, now. For just our general city, we want to build it down here. Whoop. Not too close to tourist town. I'm gonna run out of money pretty soon, though. 
Uh, remember to leave 7,000 bucks for the power plant and 1,500, I guess, for the... What's it called? The water? And we're not going to do any other services in the early game because we just want money coming in. That should be enough to get us some cash flow, right? All right. We're going to split it up a couple times. I'm just going to draw the lines at random because we'll rezone this later. I don't like... Um, I mean, you just want broad strokes for the late game planning. Uh, I, I like to bulldoze stuff and rebuild. I don't like to spend too much time planning in the super early game. All right. Now... We're going to get this to somehow get down here. Yeah. And we don't have to worry as much about wasted space um, with an oil city because we're not going for a high population, so we can waste all the space we want. So now we need a uh, power plant. Let's look which way the wind is blowing. It looks like, good, it's blowing up towards where our oil depots are going to be anyway, so all our pollution is going to be in the north. Um, <coughs> late game we're going to use coal power, but early game it's cheaper to start with wind power. And obviously we want this as far away. Oh, I can't afford water. That's very sad. So time to zone. So, in the late game, you want a 5 to 3 ratio of commercial versus residential. But in the early game, I think it's more of like a 2 to 1. I'm going to go with 3 to 2 and see how that works out. Uh, I do need some industrial in order to start, like, at all. Um, with my uh, with my projects, so oops. I'll make industrial over where the tourists are gonna live because tourists don't give a crap about pollution. They they love to breathe pollution all day long. It's very weird. They're like, we love pollution. Yay! Pollution is the best for tourism. All right. So, pretty much out of money. I guess I should zone the rest of this. How much do I need for water? 3,500. I could take a loan, but I think we're going to develop just fine without a loan. Our city has begun. There's a lot of waiting involved in this game. Even when you get your budget really high, uh, there's still going to be a lot of waiting because, you know. Money, 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 money. Money. I kind of feel like I need to bulldoze uh, uh, some, some of this stuff, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay off. Lay off until everything moves in. Because it's a shame to bulldoze something and not get to kill anyone, you know? Like, you, you gotta wait until people move into the houses and then bulldoze the road. Money, 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 money! So, Cheetah Speed is back. How cool is that, right? Um, there's been a mod. When they took away Cheetah Speed, like, immediately a mod came out that lets you fast forward to 300x speed if you want to. Um, and I've played around with it, it's pretty fun. Um, it's against the the rules of the game or something, but th there's two different takes on the rules of the game, right? There's, uh, the, the company's official take is that no modding is allowed because it interferes with their ability to sell DLC and, you know, stuff like that. But the developer's take is that modding is fine, and they wrote the interface to the game in JavaScript specifically so that it would be easy for people to mod, and they included all of the user interface stuff in your game files so that people could look at it and see what they could change and have fun with it. So, I'm a computer programmer, I make the programs, and if somebody else decided how they want my program to be used after I made it, I would be like, well, you know, 
this is how it's really meant to be used. Don't listen to those guys. So that's kind of how I feel about modding. I'm not personally going to mod because I like to play vanilla games. I don't like modding in general on any games. Uh, just because when you play the vanilla game, your your shared experience is so much broader. You know, you're playing the same game as so many more people when you don't mod. When you mod, you're playing the same game as a thousand people. When you don't mod, you're playing the same game as two million people. So I'd rather I'd rather share my experience with two million people than a thousand. Um, but anyway, uh, without the uh, the cheetah speed or the 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 cheetah cheat. The cheetah cheat mod, it would be like impossible to do those two million population residential cities. Uh, and if you haven't heard of that, basically, there is no demand for anything. Okay, in SimCity 4, right, you had to balance low, medium, high wealth, residential, commercial, and industrial in order to grow your city. And th that was the big challenge of SimCity 4, was to get skyscrapers and to grow your city bigger and bigger. And, and there were artificial caps, and it was all about trying to get people to work on time so that they would fill the jobs, because if you had unfilled jobs, you couldn't zone new jobs of that type. And it was more, like, the bigger challenge... I mean, it's really easy to get everyone to work if you have a bunch of low-wealth people and low-wealth jobs. You just put them across the street from each other, and everyone walks to work, and there's no traffic, and it's easy-peasy. Um, and you can do that in SimCity 5. You can make whole cities without anyone driving anywhere. Um, but in SimCity 4, you could do that for low-wealth and low-wealth jobs, but the managers, the medium-wealth people of that job, and the CEOs, the high-wealth people who own the factory, still had to get to the factory somehow. So you could minimize traffic by getting all of your low wealth people to walk, but then the medium and high wealth people don't they don't want to live next to a factory. They have to they have to drive or they have to take public transit. And that's what that's what made the game a lot more challenging. Um was the balancing of all that stuff. In SimCity 5, they put that stuff in, right? Um, but then they tweak the numbers to make it easy mode, right? Because right on release, like right now, there's going to be, there's more than a million, there's probably two million people who got the game that aren't gamers. They aren't, um, people who, who, who really like that much of a challenge. They just want to build a city and, and look at how pretty it is. And then there's a very small number, probably, you know, 10% or 20% or, or even less of the people who play the game who do want a challenge and are used to the challenge of SimCity 4 Rush Hour and are disappointed that it doesn't exist. And I'm kind of in that boat. But I understand why it, it shouldn't exist. We should really please more people than less. Um, so what's possible in this game, you don't need any w anything but low-wealth people, right? You, you could make a whole city with only medium-wealth people and it'll do fine. You could make a whole city of only high-wealth people and it'll do fine. And you can have a factory with 100 low-wealth jobs available, 10 medium-wealth jobs available, and one CEO job available. And you can send the CEO to work, the high-wealth guy, and nobody else. And the factory will produce just as much as if you, as if you actually filled it with, with workers. Um, so that allows people to make... M it, it increases the, the number of, of viable city options that you have, right? So... If you do it the way SimCity 4 does it, there's only one option. You have to have all four job types and all four residential types, right? Um, and the only way to get a, a spe specific city is with regional play. You can have one city with only low-wealth stuff, and then they can import their medium-wealth guys from somewhere else. Um, in SimCity 5, you can still do that. You can still build the exact same city, and it'll still work exactly as well. So they're not taking that off the table by, by dumbing down the game. They're just adding new options. Uh, with a dumbed-down game, you get the new option of not doing that. You get the new option of doing whatever the hell you want, and it'll work. Uh, so, I think you know, I think it's good in theory. Logically, it's good. I just don't like it because it makes the game so easy that it's, you know, too too damn easy. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Anyway, we've got 6K coming in. We've got lots of money. Uh, we can get to work on our oil city, man. So, you notice how I zone this down here, uh, with residential right next to commercial. This is just what I was talking about. People can walk to work now. Oh, let me finish what I was saying about the 2 million, um, city size, right? So the only reason that it's possible to make a city of 2 million people is because that whole demand thing is gone. People don't need jobs to be happy. 
what they need to be happy if you open this population layer um every household has uh oh that's that's not it every household has a yellow bar and a green bar, right? The green bar is happiness, the yellow bar is money. When they go to work and come home, they bring home money. Then they take that money and they leave to go shopping, right? That's what's happening right now. These these money things go down, they take the money and they go shopping. And they buy happiness. And they bring home the happiness. These little green guys walking around are bringing home happiness. So the happiness bar goes up, the yellow bar goes down. And the goal of every household is to have full happiness and full money. So they bring home money, they buy happiness, they bring home money, they buy happiness, they bring home money, they buy happiness, until they have full of both bars. And then they increase in density if the roads allow it. Um, and if uh, the, the, the detractor from this is taxes. Every time it goes, bring, <laughs> and gives you money, every, I think, uh, hour or something, you detract from either money or happiness by your tax rate so um right by default your tax rate is i, th I think seven or nine or something what is it oh i don't even you don't even get to set it um it's probably nine so every day they earn some money probably six bucks or uh and then they shop spending probably six bucks or two bucks or something like that and then they go to work again there's two work shifts so they bring home six more bucks so they earned 12 bucks um, and then you tax them nine bucks. So for the day, they they went up by three. And probably in, until their max happiness, they go up by three happiness each day. So it takes them a long time to increase in density. Um, you, so you can see how with this system, where you gain by working and you lose by paying taxes, if you turn off taxes, if you set your tax rate to zero, then they only gain. And that means that even if they are all unemployed and not gaining anything, they're not going to decrease in happiness and uh, and money, right? So people build these cities where there's no traffic whatsoever because nobody has to go to work and nobody has to shop because they never leave their houses. And uh, so the whole city is zoned just to the hilt with residential and nothing but residential. And then uh, the buildings will increase in density as long as your happiness increases, right? So if you don't have a job, your happiness can't increase. But there are bugs uh, to happiness. So if you build um, over here, if you build a uh, one of these culture buildings, then it gives everyone in the city a boost to happiness. Which, remember, happiness equals money. So it's like giving everyone in the city money. So the bigger your city is, the more money you gain by plopping this building. So in, in a small city, you're paying... Uh, 50,000 and you're gaining maybe 10,000 in happiness and you're like well that's okay because happiness equals money so I'm paying 50,000 for 10,000 but then I'm earning a certain amount each day because tourists come to it and give me money and whatever but if you have a huge ridiculously large like 2 million person city then you plop this thing for 50,000 and the money or happiness that you get from plopping it is equivalent to like 100,000 so you're just earning money by plopping that building and then you bulldoze it and do it again and again and again and again. And then you tax the money away from the houses. And then you lower your tax rate back down to zero. And then you plop it again and again and again. And then you tax the money away. And then you give them more money and you tax the money away. So you're just generating money. So nobody has to work. Nobody has any jobs. And you have a pure residential city. And your population goes bigger and bigger. And everybody always stays happy because they're not losing happiness through taxes. Um, so that's how you make a city with two, 2 million people in it. It took a long time for someone to get a 2 million person city. Like, this, these these exploits or bugs or the, this way of playing was discovered right away. And people were like, oh, I made a 1 million person city. Like, the day after the Cheetah Speed uh, mod was released. But then it took, like, months and months for somebody to really make sure that every single building in their entire city was max density and get a 2 million person city. And that's really an impressive feat. And they had fun doing it. And this is a game, and the goal of a game is to have fun, so I think it's a good thing. Um, but it certainly means that the game feels less challenging than SimCity 4, you know? I always have that trouble with sandbox games like Planetside 2. Uh, actually, Planetside 1. Is it Planetside? Yeah, I think it's called Planetside. It's a first-person shooter MMO, and I might be thinking of the wrong game. But anyway, uh, in Planetside 1 you gain XP by, by achieving objectives, but achieving objectives was super boring. So there was this really fun game based around shooting people in the face um, with guns. And I had a lot of fun with that game. But within the game is experience, right? XP. Um, 
And you can get XP by shooting people in the face, and that's really fun, and I had fun doing that. Oops, I didn't want high density, I want medium density. So I'm upgrading all my roads to medium density. Anyway, um, but it was much faster to gain XP uh, by capturing objectives. And capturing a defended objective involves a lot of shooting, so that's fine. That's fun, and it gives you lots of XP. The combination, right? <coughs> but capturing a completely undefended objective in the middle of nowhere gave more XP because you can do it faster. And it's not fun at all. Um, <laughs> so I ran into the problem on that game that uh, basically the game is telling you what to do by, by telling you what gives you the most XP, right? So a logical person would say, look, I, it's a game, you play for fun, I'm only going to do what's fun, that means I'm only going to fight, and I'll gain XP eventually, even if I gain it slower. But, it kind of, there's an obsession that you gain through playing video games your whole life, that is, look, the game is going to tell you the best way to play by telling you what gives you the most XP. Like, think of a Mario game where there's coins, and coins mean absolutely nothing. And the developer of the game places coins in cool places, and is like, wouldn't it be fun to go get those coins? So the coins lead you to having more fun with the game. And that's what I think of XP as. So in Planet Side 2, they're saying, we'll give you XP for capturing unoccupied objectives. And to me, that means the developers were saying, this is going to be a really fun thing, capturing unoc unoccupied objectives, so we should give people XP for it, and that will lead them the way, like a trail of coins. It will show them this cool content we've created for them. So I got into the that stupid trap of walking around capturing unoccupied objectives and I was like this is the bo most boring game in the entire world um, so once I hit max level I was like oh finally I don't have to do this boring crap anymore and then I had a lot of fun shooting people in the face um, but yeah I kind of fell a little bit into the same trap with SimCity of like the right when you get your hands on the game let's let's try to beat it let's figure out what the number is that this game wants me to maximize and try to maximize that number. And I'm sure a lot of other people fell into that trap too, and that's why so many people made these ridiculously high population cities that are boring as crap to play because it's just residential and it's just plopping that same building and bulldozing it over and over and then bulldozing anyone who gets unhappy. Um, anyway. People aren't upping to medium density. Let's find out why not. Um, same as before, this residential map, if you look... Uh, this shows you in general how happy and rich people are. You want everyone to have uh, maximum happiness and maximum richness, which means you want the green and yellow bars to be equivalent. Houses will always try to make their green bars bigger than their yellow bars, right? So they go to work, they earn money, they build their happiness. Their happiness never decreases, right? So this house should theoretically have 19 happiness forever. Um, their money bar, they pay taxes with it, so they have to earn more money and then pay more taxes and then earn more money and then pay more taxes, right? So, theoretically, you should start with a house with no happiness and no um, money, and its money should go up, then its money should go down, its happiness should go up, but its happiness should never go, da go down. So this yellow bar should go up and down while the green bar stays still. So, um, it, we'd have to watch, I guess, for a really long time to actually watch that happening. But that means that you can tell the progress of your city, how happy everyone is, just by looking at about this angle and saying, how big are my yellow bars? Um, if there are any really low yellow bars, like this house has a really low yellow bar, maybe he's having trouble getting to work and back, or maybe, you know, he just was born yesterday and will have a big yellow bar in a second. So I think uh, since everybody's walking to work and back and there's no traffic whatsoever, that it's really unlikely that anyone's unhappy for any reason. Um, we can look at, for example, crime decreases happiness, which is funny because since happiness equals money, crime costs money. It costs you money to have crimes in your city. Um, and the same is kind of kind of true of healthcare. It costs money to have um, unhealthy people. So you got to balance how much money am I losing to having sick people versus how much money am I gaining by not having to pay for a hospital, right? Because I'm making uh, 6.5k an hour, and if I built a hospital, I'd make less. So you you want to have just enough services <coughs> so that you come out ahead on on the services. And the same is true of education, right? Um, but education is kind of different. Education decreases crime, decreases uh, illness and um, injuries, and um, it costs money. So by decreasing crime, you're decreasing the happiness tax that crime takes on your city. And since happiness equals money, you're gaining money by decreasing crime. So educating your students makes money and it costs money. And you gotta you got to strike that balance between... Um, 
trying to cost yourself exactly as much money as you gain for yourself. So basically, if you keep your tax rate still and then you build a bunch of services, that's dumb. The whole point of services is to decrease the drain on your economy that these negative things have so that you can increase your taxes. Um, and you can go up to 12% on, ta on residential taxes in this game before people start getting really pissed off. Uh, unfortunately, there's kind of a stupid hard cap. If you go above 12% taxes, people will slowly just move out, which is weird because the whole thing is, is like... You know, taxes cost money, working gains money, and all negative things cost money, and you can prevent that cost by having services. That's like an, a really cool balance that's going on. But then, um, there's an exception to the balance, which is that if you... Where am I going to put this? I'm, I don't care at all about the south side of my city, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plop it on the south. Because the south doesn't matter. Uh, that's funny, the south doesn't matter. So this is another example, like my whole city just gained happiness when I when I plopped that town hall. That means plopping the town hall earned me a bunch of money. Now if all of my buildings are max happiness and I plop the town hall, I'm throwing that money in the trash, the money that I gained by plopping the town hall. So it's important to keep your tax rate high enough so that you're not throwing away money every time you make someone happy. So I'm going to set my tax rate to 20%. Um, and I'm going to start adding some basic services like fire department... Uh, this needs to be up near the oil depots because I don't want them burning down. Um, but it also should try not to interfere with highway traffic, so I'll put it... Hmm. I think this intersection will probably be pretty busy, and this whole road will be pretty busy because I'm going to keep it not... I'm not going to make it an avenue, so that'll make it much busier. Um, so I don't want it on this road, and I don't want it on the highway. So right next to that, right here where people are starting to enter my residential area is probably a good place for that. Um, similar similar idea with trash. Um, I don't want it um, close enough so that it can service all that other crap. But, uh... It's funny, placing, placing the trash, negative. So it, it not only does it cost the initial money, but it also costs you money by taking money away from those specific houses. Um, just remember, think happiness is money. Happiness is money. It's awesome. It's a good message for all the kid, for the kiddos. And, uh... Um, remember there's that trade-off between the value of healthcare versus the money that it costs you to have sick people? That one's a, that one's a doozy. I've found that it's basically better not to have healthcare. Because the amount of money that it costs you to have sick people and injured people is less than the amount of money you pay to have a clinic. So it's better just to let people die. Um, and, you know, that might be harsh, but this is a game. They're not real people. I'm okay with it. Um, so see how my money is dropping when I first lay these services? Uh, but the services are going to prevent this. Oh, not this. Abandonment due to taxes too high, due to we ran out of money. That's the purpose of the services. So if we open up this um, residential layer again, now that our taxes are a lot higher, you can see our yellow bars are starting to shrink. Our yellow bars are getting lower and lower. Um, let's find a house with a sick person so I can show you. Sick people. Sick city or restless people. All right. So, this house has a lot of sick people. Let's look at its money. Let's look at one sick person. So it's got lower money than its than its immediate neighbors. It should. I guess it actually has higher money than its immediate neighbors. There we go. Ta happiness tax. So see, every other building, their happiness stays still. This building, its happiness just went down. Its happiness goes down because it's got a sick dude. This one's happiness is going down too. Um... Actually, this house lost happiness because it ran out of money. So when it had to pay taxes, it paid taxes with happiness. And that's really bad. You want your taxes to be coming out of your money, not out of your happiness. Because happiness takes a lot longer to build, but it should theoretically never go down. Um, so a lot of these houses are still perfectly happy. Like, you can see how a lot of the bars are the same height. Um, and if all of your happiness bars are the same height, then plopping new happiness buildings wastes its happiness. So what you really want is for your whole city to have 
a little bit less than max happiness. <laughs> but you don't want your happiness to go down too much and then people are going to abandon their houses. And any house that loses happiness during the day is losing it for a specific reason. So crime, pollution, illness, um, bad haircuts. Gaining some happiness. He's got 25. So I've got medium density roads. I would expect by now some of these guys to up their density so we can open the building density map and find out why they're not doing doing that. So all these green bars suggest that people will up in density within a couple of days. Uh, there's a minimum number of days before someone can up upgrade their density. So even if they have like a big green green bars like this, there's still it's still going to take a little while to upgrade their density. Also, there's some tricks to to upgrading density. For example, this house and this house can merge together to upgrade their density. Um, but if one of them is happy enough to to grow and the other one isn't then the one that's happy, happy enough to grow is going to say not enough room to increase density, even though there's plenty of room. Because he can't buy out his neighbor to increase density. You have to have them both be happy enough. So what you're looking for is like this, two houses right next to each other that are dark green. These guys are probably going to upgrade their density first. Um, but even though I think that a lot of these houses are ready, like this, especially this line of houses and stuff, there's just a certain number of days that... And, and minimum population before they're going to be allowed to upgrade their density. Which I think is actually a good thing. Because it'd be silly to have one super high density building and then a bunch of low density buildings. Actually, we can do that if you want to see that. That's kind of funny. Um, what you can do... Um, like right now, I have all, I have basically no traffic because everybody's walking across the street to get to work, right? Because I put jobs across the street from all the houses. But... <laughs> <laughs> if we blow up all of our, well, I'm not going to do it, but if we blow up all of our commercial districts, all of our jobs, and then um, make a second city and put some jobs out there, and then everyone has to commute to work, or even if we just put like a bunch of commercial districts right here, and then everyone had to commute to work, then the house that's closest to the jobs is going to increase density, whereas everyone else in the city is going to remain the same density. Uh, because what happens is that an um, there are two waves of workers and three waves of shoppers. But when a wave of shoppers is sent out, what happens is, is it doesn't come from the houses. It comes from the shopping stores. So the stores all say, okay, uh, anyway, it looks like this. Um, oh, why does this look so weird? That's not what I meant. There we go. It looks like this. Um, you see these little yellow yellow balls that wa wander around the city and they go past houses and when they go past houses, houses get power. Uh, um, shopping districts do that same thing. So this shopping district is going to send out a blast of little blue balls. Um, and it's going to travel down the roads, taking random turns at each, at each uh, intersection. And the first house that it hits, these houses are upgrading density, cool. First house that it hits is going to send all of its shoppers to that store. Um, and then the next house that it's hit is going to send all of it, its shoppers to that store and so on and so forth. So an average house is going to send out shoppers maybe once, maybe twice a day, depending on how close it is to stores. But um, if you put all of your stores in one place and all of your houses in another, then th that little blue ball is always going to hit the same house first. So that guy is always going to get dibs on the shopping for the day. So what you're going to what you're going to end up with is that guy getting twice as much happiness as everyone else in your city. So you can get, like, skyscrapers with a really low population city that way. It's pretty funny. Oh, excuse me. Yes, buddy. Did mommy say it's okay? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, it's okay with me. What was this saying? We have high t yeah, of course we have high taxes. How else would we get money? Crazy. So you notice, even though my tax rate is 12, people are still upping in density. And that's because they're not pissed off about anything. Um, and their their level of pissed offedness can be can be um, measured, of course, by opening what I did before. Um, you can eyeball the entire city this way and say, "Hey, how pissed off is everyone?" And you can see a lot of these green bars. I think the maximum for these low density houses is 36. So those green. Stop bumping my chair, please. There you go. Right there is better. <clears throat> Sorry, that's my son. He's playing Plants vs Zombies because it's an awesome game. 
Um, so if you see any houses with really low money like this, and then their their tax rate is starting to eat into their happiness, uh, and this is common across your whole city, then you should probably lower tax rate in while you figure it out so that you don't lose a bunch of density on stuff. So like all of these guys are pissed off because they live right next to the dump. I think they they um the yeah the garbage dump. I think they lose happiness every day because they're close to that. Um. Let's watch them for a while. I like to I like to watch the little dudes to make sure that I fully understand. I've played this game for 190 hours now, so I pretty much understand everything. But it's still fun to to watch it just to confirm that what I know is really true. Anyway, so under the services, there's a red number, and theoretically, if all of your red numbers are zero, then you can set your tax rate to 12. And if all of your red numbers are low, you can probably still get get by with 12. Like right now, I have a 12 tax rate. Um, but if your red numbers start to get high, you're probably better off having a lower tax rate. Oh, also, crime. I, I didn't realize I hadn't plopped a police station. So, <coughs> it's funny. Um, it's cheaper to fight crime with education than it is to fight it by putting people in jail. Um, for several reasons. First, a household with a person in jail is going to send out fewer shoppers to get it happiness. And, whoa, everyone just lost... Oh, there was a crime committed here, and so everyone lost happiness due to due that at crime. That's funny. Um, a household with people in jail is going to send out fewer workers and fewer shoppers, so it's going to, in general, get less happiness, which means it's going to be able to pay less in taxes, which means you're going to get less money overall. Um, by putting people in jail, they get rehabilitated. So these two guys... Uh, a level 1 criminal gets rehabilitated after one day, a level 2 criminal gets rehabilitated after two days, right? Um, so the levels of criminals. When somebody uh, commits a crime, if, the, if they get caught, then they go to jail and they lose all their crime levels one at a time, one per day, taking up room in your jails. If the crime is successful and they don't get caught, they gain a criminal level. They gain a level. Uh, and so the next crime they commit is going to be a level 2 crime instead of a level 1 crime. Uh, and it goes on and on until you get people burning down your city via arson and stuff. Um, uh, so you can you need to reduce the you can reduce the level of your existing criminals using jail cells and police cars. You catch people and put them in jail, and it l drops them from level five criminal down to level zero criminal. Um, but the only way to get them to stop being criminals at all is with education. Um, and as you can imagine, if you reduce the number of criminals who are born in your city by 50%, then you're going to free up 50% of your jail cells. Um, and you're going to get a lot less high-level criminals if you have a lot less criminals overall. So it's really a lot better to use education to fight crime than it is to use uh, jail jail to fight crime. I, I kind of missed out. I was talking, and I, I should have built a, a police station and a, some education a lot earlier. So you can see I'm back up to 9k an hour. Um, so I plopped all those services and my income dropped. But then the services kind of paid for themselves through the high tax rate. And now my my, um, my income is back to where it was and my population grew. Like it just, it turns, it increases my population by increasing the, the overall happiness or decreasing the happiness drain on my city. And uh, so then I get more people and then those more people pay more taxes and so on and so forth. So... What's, why is this guy stuck in traffic for so damn long when there's, like, no traffic here? Oh, I guess he was fighting a crime. Never mind. Crime fighter. So, these cross streets... Um, I'm hitting shift RR to bring up the upgrade road thing. You should learn the hotkeys. It makes the game a little bit faster and more fun to play. Uh, and I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but we, we totally just got some eye bolts and screwed them into the some beams in the ceiling and hung a swing from it. And Gwenny is swinging inside the house right now. So sweet. So sweet it is. So sweet it is. Yay, Gwenny! Um, upgrading all the, the cross streets to high density because theoretically there shouldn't be any houses zoned on them anyway. Uh, so they're just used for traffic between between lanes. So there's no reason for them not to be high density. I think I did, unfortunately, uh, zone some buildings on them, but I can I can deal with that later by bulldozing those buildings and rezoning if I have to. So I do need to start educating my 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 peoples, my peoples, 
And <coughs> with crime and education, which is a, an offshoot of crime, it's always better to, to overkill early than it is to try to catch up later. Because if you end up with a bunch of level 50 criminals, you're, you're dead. Your whole city is dead. Your mother, your father. Because nobody's going to work and bringing home money, so you can't set your tax rate very high, so you have to get money from somewhere else. Now, honestly, SimCity is crazy easy, and if you if you do get into that situation, you can get around it just by getting money through alternate means. Um, well, I want to place this water tower here, but I can't. Put it there. Put it there, kid. Um... So if you if you if you die by crime and you run out of money trying to fight the crime, then what you can do to get around it is just build a processing plant. Um, because the global market is turned off, basically they wanted to have the game be auto balanced, right? Because people are always going to find an exploit and get a ridiculously high income, and then you're going to have to balance that with a patch. And they didn't want to have to go around with the whack-a-mole hammer changing all the values. Um, so instead, they designed the game to, to whack-a-mole hackers by itself, not hackers, but exploits by itself. Um, and how they did that was to say, uh, we're going to put in a global market. So if somebody learns that you can make millions of dollars a minute by selling TVs, then the price of TVs across the entire game is going to drop every time someone sells a TV. Uh, so until finally it's not even really that profitable anymore. And that will make it so that every time we find an exploit like hey I found out that selling alloy is really good uh, but then if I if everyone finds that out and everyone does it then the price of alloy is going to drop lower and lower so it, it balances itself but that's all disabled right now um, they'll probably turn it back on uh, in the future they just turned back on sp cheetah speed so that should be coming soon I guess um, and because it's disabled it, once you find an exploit once you find a way to make tons of money you can just do it forever so uh, the current exploits for making tons of money are processing factories will just make you a massive killing and TVs make, make tons and tons of money. Um, so if you make processing plants and TVs then you can recover from any mistake you've ever made in your whole city. Um, got some more crime going on. We've got enough jail cells. You see, uh, it's tempting when, you, when this thing is yellow and this guy says, you're on a crime wave, you need more stuff to fight crime. It's tempting to throw down another police station to, to add more cars to your existing police station. Um, but what you got to realize is that the real way to tell if you need more police cars is this. If you see this as green, that means that some of your police cars are still in the station, not even out there patrolling. Uh, so adding more cars would do nothing. There would just be more cars sitting inside the police station. So um, if you want to know whether you need more cars, look at this. And the same thing is true of fire. Um, if you click over here, it's yellow. It says, small fires everywhere. You need more fire, blah, 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 blah. But the real way to check is to go over to your fire department and see if it's green or yellow. So right now it's yellow. So we could use another truck. Use another truck. So now it's green, so we don't need another truck. That's how you tell when to when to add services to your city. Same is true of ambulances. Uh, clinic is full. We're turning away patients. Obviously, that's red. It's bad. Red is bad, guys. But again, I kind of like to to make sure that people who get sick die. See, with with crimes, if you ignore them, they get higher and higher level. With illnesses, if you ignore them, they die, and then they get reborn as productive members of society. So, um, in general, you're better off just ignoring healthcare altogether. I'm not going to ignore it because, I don't know, I'm just, I don't know, I was talking about stuff and it seemed like the right thing to do to add, uh, clinic stuff. So, factories, uh, if, let's look at the, the, look at the factory layer for a second. I was intending to only play for half an hour, it's been more than half an hour, you guys. Um, 